I now have the honor of introducing Ambassador Dani Danone, Permanent Representative of Israel to the United Nations. It is now my privilege to introduce Ambassador Kataline Baudier, Permanent Representative of Hungary to the United Nations. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for your inspiring words and for all the work that Hungary is doing. All the work that Hungary is doing. All the work that Hungary is doing. The United Nations is an institution built on the ashes of the Jewish people and on the devastation wreaked by anti Semitism upon all civilization. And yet, the UN has never adopted a resolution or commissioned a report singularly devoted to exposing, denouncing, and eradicating anti-Semitism wherever it occurs. Just this month, the Security Council was asked and refused to issue a firm and unequivocal rejection of anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. Why not? The answer is painfully clear. Anti-Semitism itself, right here in the United Nations. Anti-Semitism at the UN does more than stymie opportunities for prevention. It creates occasions for promotion. The marketing strategy has three identifiable steps. Step one, deny. As a matter of routine, anti-Semites say they aren't anti-Semites, except they are. Two weeks ago, in this very room, a two-day forum on the question of Palestine was convened under UN auspices with UN-invited speakers and UN-accredited participants. Speakers deprecated the idea of a chosen people and railed about a Jewish lobby. The Palestinian UN representative claimed Palestinian land was exactly like German-occupied France and Poland. On May 18, 2018, at the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, UN-accredited delegates, both states and NGOs, said, the atrocities seen during the Second World War were happening again, and Palestinians were being exterminated with a view to totally destroy the identity of a people. Right down the hall from here, a Palestine exhibit has been deliberately re relocated next to the Holocaust exhibit. Tour guides don't stop at one without stopping at the other. Belittling Jewish religious beliefs Invoking Jewish conspiracy theories and anal analogizing Israelis to Nazis isn't subtle, it's anti-Semitism. At the May Forum, successive speakers also denounced any Jewish state. Broadcast by the UN around the world, for instance, the racist policies of Israel draw from the Jewish character of the state of Israel. A Jewish democracy is an oxymoron. And the Palestinian UN representative said, and I'm quoting him, President Truman, when they put a piece of paper for him for the recognition of the Jewish state of Israel, he scratched the Jewish and he left it only as a state of Israel. This is only just to set the record straight. Straight historical revisionism, that is. Actually, Truman crossed out the typewritten Jewish state and added with his own hand, state of Israel, solely in response to learning the country's new name, and ensuring the U.S. was first to recognize Israel 11 minutes after its proclamation. It isn't complicated. Self-determination for everyone but the Jewish people is anti-Semitism. Step two, obfuscate. Religious bigots claim that the conflict with Israel is not about religious bigotry, except it is. They now say it's about 1967 borders and post-1967 settlements. But a mere two weeks ago, right here, a UN-invited guest said Israel was the only country in modern memory that uprooted its refugees, then massacred them and humiliated them for seven decades. Referring to Israel's birth in 1948, the Palestinian UN representative declared, we are very, very eager in order to put an end to the misery of our people after 70 years of occupation. Challenging Israel's presence for 70 years is anti-Semitism. Step three, attack. Charge Jews with participating in a cover-up, 
and forbidding any criticism of Israel. Except they don't. Furthermore, UN meetings in New York and Geneva in the past two weeks, not atypical, have resounded with accusations, and all of these are quotes, that the Israeli killing machine has been engaged in ethnic cleansing, a culture of hate, atrocities, egregious cruelty, genocide, crimes against humanity, savagery, brutality, and a moral depravity of the, uh, of the most evil kind. For starters, no other country in the UN is subject to this kind of onslaught. This isn't criticism, it's a feeding frenzy. It's anti-Semitism. Now let's not forget that at the United Nations, we've been down this path before. Remember the alleged massacre of 500 people in the suicide bombers capital of Janine in 2002? Three months later, the UN admitted there had been no massacre, and a total of about 20 Palestinian civilians had died, fewer than the number of Israeli casualties. Remember the UN Goldstone Report of 2009? It accused Israel of deliberately targeting civilians until Goldstone himself recanted the libel. And now comes the latest UN mission launched amid accusations of another Israeli massacre of civilians in Gaza. This one debunked by Hamas and Islamic Jihad themselves, who couldn't resist boasting that 85% of casualties were their own. There is a pattern here. It's called anti-Semitism, or as the Queen of Hearts would describe UN inquisitions, sentence first, verdict afterwards. Beyond the UN hyperbole, straight statistics tell the same story. The UN Human Rights Council reserves one permanent agenda item for condemning Israel. All other 192 UN states are considered together. The council has adopted more resolutions condemning Israel than any other country on earth, and nothing on almost 90% of the world's states. There have been 10 emergency special sessions of the General Assembly, Five are on Israel alone, including the 10th, now reconvened 17 times. 500,000 dead, 7 million displaced in Syria, has never resulted in a single emergency special session. In 2017, the General Assembly adopted 21 resolutions condemning Israel, and a single resolution each on a handful of other countries. The UN Commission on the Status of Women annually condemns only one country on the planet, for violating women's rights, Israel, for violating the rights of Palestinian women. This record of egregious discrimination is the antithesis of the UN's Charter's promise of equality for all nations large and small. It's anti-Semitism. A Palestinian illustrator recently depicted an Israeli soldier force-feeding poison to a Palestinian baby after a false accusation that Israel had killed a baby girl who in fact died of a congenital heart defect. Controversy surrounded a photograph of Palestinian leader Abbas enjoying the publication. But at the UN, this was old news. Last November, the same illustrator was feted here at a UN event organized by a UN committee. He was introduced by the Palestinian UN representative as, and I'm quoting him, the pride of a nation for his contribution to humankind. At the time, his illustrations or contributions included a Jewish star of David twisted to mimic Nazi barbed wire imprisoning Palestinians. In short, today's UN acts as a force multiplier for anti-Semitism glorifying its proponents and providing a global platform for its advocates, to which there is no response from inside the United Nations other than for shame.